Hello, friends. So, so far, uh, you have seen that I have been uh, recording and uh, posting videos related to technical analysis, related to fundamental analysis. In today's video, we will uh, deal with a different topic. Uh, we will uh, talk a little about uh, basics of coding and programming, which is, you know, foundation of quants. And the first thing which comes there is data. How do we get the data to, you know, do any kind of quantitative analysis or build any kind of algorithm? And a uh, few months back, I had posted on my blog uh, regarding how to do this. And in case you have not seen this, so this is my blog, factsbeyondnumbers.wordpress.com. And I had posted on blog on extracting stock price data using Python. And I got a few queries where uh, people, they had some doubts around how to execute it or they were getting stuck, they were getting errors. So I thought, why not to make a small video out of it and, uh, you know, uh, just show how to do this in Python. So let us go ahead and let us explore how to, you know, uh, extract uh, not only company data, how can you extract uh, index data? Like many of us want to build strategies around Nifty or, you know, small cap index or FMCG index or, you know, bank index. Uh, so how to do that and to do that or even uh, to do that, we need to do experiments around that data or even stock data. So even if you want to do experiments around index data, uh, Nifty ke liye ya fir some stock data, or we want to experiment around some 200 companies for last 10 years of data. I always get these kind of queries. Can you give me, you know, last five years of data for this company or for uh, Nifty 500 companies is that. So I'll tell you a very simple way of how to do it, uh, leveraging Python. Uh, now in this video, I will not discuss about how to install Python, how to work on Python and all. Uh, you will have to do that yourself and you will get enough number of, you know, videos. Uh, so, and in case uh, if you are not, uh, you know, uh, uh, if you are not like uh, uh, able to do it, actually we do, we do run courses where, you know, you can, we teach about quants and uh, we teach a lot of stuff around it. So we call this program as Quantic where, you know, we teach technical analysis, which is the foundation. We teach business intelligence in terms of doing exploratory analysis. We teach Python, which uh, we use as foundation, foundational stone of uh, doing quantitative modeling for programming, where you can extract all this data. You can create different kind of metric. You can backtest your programs. And then quant strategy where we test and backtest and validate some of these strategies. So we have a program called Quantic and uh, uh, you can uh, write to us or uh, you can just put a query here on the YouTube channel and uh, we can provide all the details. But let us get on how to do this. So I am assuming uh, you would have installed Python. You have a Python Jupyter Notebook open and you can install another ID called Anaconda which will make your life easy. This is the Anaconda Navigator. And Jupyter is basically the uh, ID where I'll be writing my Python script. So I've launched the Jupyter Notebook. Now the way Python works is uh, Python works on certain uh, programming languages, uh, uh, sorry, certain packages. And these packages are nothing but uh, they are reusable code. You can say in a very layman language, somebody else has created these reusable code. So if you have to do a particular operation, like if you have to do, let's say, uh, uh, average calculation or something, you don't need to write it. Somebody has already written a function and you just need to call the function. So uh, pandas is a very popular function for any kind of data transformation activity. For especially for the stock market data, we install another package called NSCPy. And uh, the beauty is all this is free of cost. I mean, it's open source language, the packages are free. So you don't need to pay anything. And I have commented this out because I already have it installed and I installed uh, it's from the command prompt rather than, you know, installing here. But if you're installing in the Jupyter Notebook, you can remove this command line and you can give this uh, install command. So let me run this code and to run this code. So once you have written this code, you can type it here and to write into a cell. In fact, let me show you how to start it. So when you launch the uh, Jupyter Notebook, this is the kind of interface you will get. 
and let's say whichever field uh, folder you want to start your program you go there and then you launch a new python script so your default script you'll get this command line and then you need to write all this so let us say i'm just showing you my copy paste <coughs> and then if you want to write next next set of code in the next line or you can write it here but if you want to go to the next line you give this plus symbol and one more line gets open. So this is how we write it here. Now let us say I want to run this code. So to run this code, you need to press shift and enter together. And as you saw, there was a star mark. Star mark means it was running. And when the star mark has gone, it means it has ran it successfully, which means all these packages are imported. <clears throat> also, we need to do some operation based on date time. So we are importing the date time function. So now given all these packages are, uh, you know, here imported. First, I'm trying to extract the index data. So to extract the index data and we can extract all the data I have right now, I have taken these indexes, nifty small cap 100, nifty small cap 250, uh, small cap 50, all these indexes. So there are almost seven, eight indexes I'm trying to extract. So what I'm doing is I'm saving the name of all those indexes in a symbol. And these names, you cannot change the names because this is how these names are there in the NSC5 package. And then I'm creating a dummy box. So if we like to keep a box, we have a box and we packing a suitcase and we take a suitcase and we take a suitcase. So think this data one as a suitcase or the box where हम ये डेटा सेव करेंगे तो हम एक खाली सूटकेस व्हिच वी कॉल्ड अ डेटा फ्रेम हियर डेटा फ्रेम क्रिएट कर रहे हैं एंड वी क्रिएट इट एंड वी कन्वर्ट दिस इनटू अ डेटा फ्रेम नाउ देयर आर डिफरेंट टाइप्स ऑफ यू नो एंटिटीज टू होल्ड डेटा इन पाइथन डेटा फ्रेम इज वन ऑफ देम सो देन वी हैव क्रिएटेड दिस डेटा फ्रेम कॉल्ड डेटा वन एंड वी हैव क्रिएटेड वन मोर ऑब्जेक्ट सिंबल जहां पे हमने जितने भी इंडेक्सेस का हमें डेटा चाहिए वी हैव ट्राइड टू save those names in the symbol now we need to extract data for each of these indexes so when we need to do for each of them we need to run a loop so what we are doing is we are taking the symbol and we are running a for loop which means i am running a loop inside this symbol so that this for loop will go one by one pick each element and then for this element First element will pass to the value x. Then I'm kya kar rahe This is a function in this package nscpy. What this function does is it takes this symbol x. So when for will run for the first time, it will take the value nifty small cap 100. So here is index collega. And then the function, it's a predefined function. And there is a predefined nomenclature. We have to pass which symbol we want data. What is the start date from which we want data? What is the end date from which we want the data? And index is basically in a, a data frame, there is something called index. You can consider index as the uh, something which adds uniqueness to the row and it adds an index number. So, we define that we want the symbol ka kab se kab tak data. Chahiye. Now, when this for loop will run, it will try to go through each of the items in the symbol and one by one, it will pass that to the X and then this command will get executed. So first time nifty small gap 100 ka do sal ka data, ye data mein save ho jayega. And then we are converting this object data also into a data frame. And uh, ye data jab aata hai, so you will not know for which index this data was there. So that is why I am passing, one, I am creating one more column just to identify because we will have 10 different indexes. And all this data will be, you know, consolidated into one file. So just to differentiate ki cons are small cap 100 ka data tha, cons are small cap 50 ka data tha. We are just also passing the index name for which the data is extracted by creating one more column called index name. Or ye x value mein ek ek karke jo jo index ka naam tha, we'll pass. And then this is the one where data is there. This is the one which is the blank one. So hum in dono ko merge kar dete hai. When we merge, then we get a data one. Why we are merging is because when the for loop will run for the second time, then it will extract data for this. And this data needs to be merged with this data. So, data save So what we are doing is we are saving this data into data one. 
and again data and data one they keep getting merged they keep getting merged so basically what happens is all the data for all the index keeps getting appended so hame alag alag 10 file banane ki zarurat nahi hai ek hi file mein append ho ke sara ka sara data yahan pe data one mein aa jayega so let's run now this line so this line has run successfully and if just to show you what the symbol now contains if i press symbol you can see the symbol holds all this index names now now i will run this loop and i have something called printex printex will tell ki kaun sa index ka abhi operation run ho raha hai and once it finish the first operation then the second third fourth fifth it will go on it just tells in terms of when the uh, sometimes when we run this program for let's say 1000 companies having this printex helps to know ki kitni company ka ho gaya 100 company hua 200 company hua and you know ki things are going fine run ho raha hai if you keep getting next 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 company you know ki things are running fine so once i run this you can see and it's so fast two years of data for all the six indexes it has done in hardly 2 3 seconds so fast now this file this data frame data 1 is holding all the data for all the six indexes for two years so i'll just show you the top five rows and again head is the command for five rows so you can see it has a date it has the open price high price low price close price for this particular index somehow the volume and turnover information is not available and now we have the index name which is nifty small cap 100 and if you see the first index was small cap 100 just to show that this is correct the last index is fmcg index and i just want to show you the last five rows for which we have a tail command so now you can see and this is the last date december 2020 31 december was the last date and you have the fmcg index which means looks like the data has been captured correctly just to know what all this data captures so we have something called shape command this tells now this data frame has almost 3461 rows and seven columns if you see we have 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 index and two years of data if market was open for 250 days almost 500 days per index so for seven index 5 into 100 into 7 3500 so almost you got 3 4 6 1 looks like the data pool has been correct and your column count is 7 now this data uh, uh, you may not be comfortable in python analyzing but you are good at excel so we can take this data to excel and to take this data to excel what we do is there is another command called a uh, 2 underscore csv so we take this data frame dot 2 underscore csv and we save this file with the name index data 2020 and all this i am doing in a folder which is present here called quants if you see this quants folder right now nothing is there it's all blank the moment i run this command and to run again you press for every cell you have to press each of these things is called cell i could have done everything in one cell but just for explainability purpose i am trying to explain in different cells so i hit shift and enter and it has executed and now you can see here there is a file which is come and it's come here and if we open this file so then you can see you have the index data right from 2019 till 2020 for all the index just to show you quickly what all this data contains i am just creating a pivot table just to show you so these are the indexes you have all the indexes if we want to count for how many rows we have the data uh no sum i just need to count so we have almost 495 rows of data uh somehow it didn't generate data for uh nifty small cap 100 250 and this one let's see why it didn't generate so let's do maybe that data doesn't exist or there could be some reason so nifty small cap 250 nifty small cap 250 let's say this is the nifty small cap 250 so nifty small cap 250 also data is there so why it has not captured uh, let's see the reason and king let's try to do this again we take the index name 
Oh, yeah, yeah, I might have done some mistake in the pivot. So now we can see this data is there and you know, this is the data count these indexes are having and you know, you have the whole raw data available here. So now given we have done this with the index, let's try to do this with stock. If we have to you know, extract stock data, how can we extract? So again, we need to repeat the same process. We pass the list of stocks for which we want to extract the data. And uh, uh, I have done only for five stocks. You can do it for even 200, 300 stocks. Just for example, I'm showing you for five stocks. And I, instead of index names, I save these stock names in the Excel. And then I repeat the same set of command. I create a blank data frame called data one. And then I set the counter as zero. And then I start a for loop for each of these companies and then get history, same command. It's just that instead of index, now we have a company symbol, NSE code. And then again, the start date at the end date uh, from 2018 till 2000. So this is from 2018. Let's say I want to do from 2019, January to 2020, December 31st. So I set it up. And then again, I do the concatenation. And when we run it, now because it's doing for the company, Okay, I think we didn't run this command. See what has happened. I didn't run this command, so still it has done for the index. So I need to run this command again. And now if I run this, so my symbol will get replaced by these company names instead of index. And then you can see it's collecting data for the index. It is taking a little longer time because the company data is a little more rich and I will show you. So now this is the company data and you can see it has more information. So there is a date, there is a symbol, there is a series, it's equity data, previous close date, or price, open price, high price, low price, last price, close price, VWAP, uh, uh, then uh, volume, total turnover, which is the total uh, value of shares traded, total count of trades, the delivery volume and delivery percentage. This is what we use in all the technical analysis and trading and quants and all of that. And you have all this data available for almost uh, all these five companies where we can create even for 500 companies. And now if you see, it has almost 2,465 rows and 14 columns. And again, if I show you the tail, you can see the last company will be there. The last company was about India. You can see it's the December data of about India. And again, if you want to save this data, again, repeat the same command. And again, when we go here, we can see just right now on 30th or 35, 2021, right now, one, sorry, company data. Yeah, a new file has been created. And once you open this file, you can see you have a date, you have a symbol, all this information available for all these five companies for two years. You can do this even for 10 years, 15 years, 20 years. You can do this for 500 companies. Very, very simple script, hardly four or five lines. And then it's up to you what kind of analysis you want to do, what kind of algorithm you want to do. So I hope this video was useful. If you like this video, just share, uh, you know, like our YouTube channel. Uh, spread the good word and I will try to post more videos. This is the first video I'm trying to post on quants. I will try to share more information about quants, how to build these algorithms and all. And if you want to learn more about this, just, you know, uh, you can go through our, uh, actually you can uh, mail to us or, you know, you can uh, write to us. This is our mail ID. So you can email us on scientificinvesting1 at the rate gmail.com or you can keep visiting our blog. Uh, we have a YouTube channel here you can watch. Also, we run all the courses on our LMS program or our LMS site. You can visit this LMS site and get more information. So I'll see you again with uh, some new video. Thanks for your time.